U.S. Special Operations Forces, which includes elite commando forces from each branch of the military, such as the Navy SEALs, Army Rangers, and others have become critical to many U.S. military successes over the past decade. Each branch of the military has its own specially trained teams that can operate in any situation and perform whatever task it takes to get the job done. The Navy SEAL stands for Sea, Air, and Land, which identifies the elements in which they operate. SEALs work in small units, often one to two men, but sometimes in a platoon comprised of up to 16. They are trained to perform specific tasks under any type of circumstance and in any environment. Navy SEALs have a history shrouded in secrecy. SEALs were officially formed in 1962 and were soon engaged in spy missions and river and combat tasks in Vietnam and participated in Operation Phoenix, a program to assassinate village leaders sympathetic to the Viet Cong. Commissioned in 1962, they are the most elite shore area special forces in the world, concentrating on very select and often clandestine intelligence gathering and precision strike missions. For over 50 years, it was assumed that the origin of the Navy SEALs was the Naval Combat Demolition Units and Underwater Demolition Teams of World War II. In reality, the Navy's special warfare activities started in August 1942 with the amphibious scouts and raiders. SEAL training is brutal. It takes over 30 months to train a Navy SEAL to the point at which he will be ready for deployment. The SEALs that emerge are ready to handle pretty much any task they could be called on to perform, including diving combat swimming, navigation, demolitions, weapons, and parachuting. The training pushes them to the limit both mentally and physically in order to weed out those who may not be able to successfully complete the demanding missions and operations with which SEALs are faced. The types of stresses they endure during basic underwater demolition are the same stresses they will endure as SEALs. If they can't withstand it when lives aren't on the line, Chances are good they won't be able to withstand it when lives are at stake. 272, Hellwig secured. Hallelujah! The war cry of the Navy SEALs becomes an automatic response for SEALs during the torturous SEAL training. While there may be other variations in meaning, it generally means yes, understood, and I'm not letting this evolution get the best of me. From day one in SEAL training, trainees are taught the importance of teamwork. Focus is not on the individual. The fact that the SEALs have never left another SEAL behind on a mission is a testament to this belief system. Throughout their training, they learn more and more why teamwork is necessary in the type of work they will soon be entering. SEALs are performing tasks that may not be possible for a single man to accomplish but can be possible for a team composed of men who have the same training and skills. Their success depends on what they can do together as a team. There is also the infamous Hell Week, which takes place toward the end of basic conditioning, which is the toughest training in the US military. There's a part of SEAL training called Hell Week, which is um, when they wake you up on Sunday and then you don't get to sleep until Friday and you run about seven marathons in that time with boats on your heads and it's, and that's the most that's where most seal candidates drop out it gets hard when i started hell week that same instructor said um you're about to go to war for the first time and the enemy is all your doubts all your fears and everyone you know back home that told you you couldn't do this keep your head down keep moving forward no matter what never quit you'll be fine like professionals in any other field SEALs can only successfully do their jobs if they have the right tools. Their weapons, vehicles, and other gear can help them not only perform their missions, but also come out of those missions alive. It isn't uncommon for SEALs to need clothing for varying temperatures and tasks. For example, when swimming to shore for a mission, the SEAL may need gear for extremely cold water temperatures as well as warmer land. For cold weather, Clothing must prevent heat loss resulting from all sources, including radiation and evaporation. 
The seal must often generate heat through physical activity and then vent it if he moves into a warmer location or begins to overheat due to extreme of exertion. Layering and ventilation allow for cooling and help keep perspiration from making clothing damp. Seals use handguns such as the 9mm Sig Sauer P226 and the MK23 offensive handgun with a suppressor and laser aiming module. They use rifles such as the Carbine Automatic M4I1 and the AK-47. They also use shotguns, machine guns like MK-43 and the HKMP-5 submachine gun series, among others. Add to that list sniper rifles such as the M88 and the M14 sniper rifle, along with grenade launchers, mortars and anti-tank rockets, and SEALs can choose a weapon to fit the specific task at hand. Each vehicle that Navy SEALs use to transport teams and units to their destination has a specific benefit and utility. One type of vehicle is the SEAL delivery vehicle. These are vehicles that operate below the surface of the water to deliver Navy SEALs and their equipment to their mission area. The crew uses underwater breathing apparatus for life support while navigating the submerged SEAL delivery vehicle to the destination remaining completely submerged the entire time. Some models of SEAL delivery vehicles can deliver several SEALs with their gear to their mission area, remain in the area while they complete the mission, and then return them to their ship. The MKV Special Operations Craft is the most versatile, high-performance combatant craft in the Naval Special Warfare Inventory. It is used primarily in medium-range ocean transport of SEAL combat swimmers in environments where the threat is low to medium. It is also used for some coastal patrol and maritime interdiction operations, such as destroying an enemy supply line. The MKV can operate from shore facilities or from specially equipped ships. The NSW Rigid Hull Inflatable Boat is an 11-meter, high-speed, high-buoyancy, Extreme weather craft used for moving SEAL tactical elements to and from the ship and beaches. It is large enough to transport an entire SEAL squad. The Special Operations Craft Riverin is Naval Special Warfare's newest surface craft. It is used in river environments and has a top speed of 42 knots. It holds up to 20,500 pounds, 9,300 kilograms of personnel and cargo and is well suited to inland waterways. The Soshar can be transported by U.S. Air Force cargo aircraft and by helicopter. The Combat Rubber Rating Craft is a 15-foot, heavily reinforced, inflatable rubber boat that is useful on many missions. This is the one trainees are carrying overhead during basic underwater training, it's often called a Zodiac. In deployment, it is used for over-the-horizon transportation and dropping and retrieving lightly armed seals on beaches and in rivers. In the book Warrior Soul, the memoir of a Navy SEAL, former SEAL Chuck Farr describes how a mission to protect a U.S. Navy amphibious ship at an undisclosed location turned into the capture of would-be terrorists. As leader of his SEAL detachment, Farr was responsible for securing the ship in port while its cargo of ammunition was unloaded. After searching many fishing boats in the vicinity of the harbor, Farr noticed a fishing boat coming into the area that didn't look like the others. He became suspicious and jumped into a Zodiac boat with two other SEALs, intending to search the slowly approaching boat. Maneuvering to prevent the boat from having access to the ship, they turned to face the boat head-on in order to force it to stop. Confirming their suspicions, the boat began increasing its speed. The Zodiac was running side by side with the fishing boat, and Farr was yelling, but the boat's driver wouldn't stop. As the Zodiac got closer, one of the men in the boat began reaching under a fishing net for what looked like an AK-47. The Zodiac driver sharply turned and rammed the Zodiac into the fishing boat. Farr pulled out his gun to fire a warning shot across the hull of the boat, but his gun jammed. He jumped into the fishing boat with the men, followed by the other two seals. After a brief struggle, they tied up the men on the fishing boat. Looking beneath the nets, they found two large bundles of Yugoslavian-made TNT taped together with fuses ready, along with two AK-47. Explosives of this type are designed to punch holes in a ship's steel hull. 
the men in the fishing boat were combat swimmers preparing to attach these explosives to the anchored U.S. Navy ship. While for many years the activities of the SEALs was largely shrouded in obscurity, the U.S. Navy SEALs along with their companion have become a ubiquitous component in the ongoing war against terrorism around the globe. The units have been in the spotlight following high-profile operations including the rescue of Captain Richard Phillips of the Maersk ship Alabama in the raid at Pakistan where Osama bin Laden was successfully killed. Even with a shift in focus to great power competition, the Navy SEALs will evolve to meet the challenges of an ever-changing and dangerous world.